He's got it. He's kicked it. He got it. Tyne Holmes has sent the Cowboys into a grand final qualifier. Hello and welcome to Little Betty's Sports Show for a Monday first look. I'm your host, Nikki Sylvester. Joining me today is MG for the second round of the AFL finals. We've also got Top Rope on the line for the first week of the NRL finals and what a weekend it was. First look is proudly brought to you by Little Betty TV, topsport.com.au, punting form and manscaped for the very best in men's grooming. MG, over to you. Give me a little weekend recap. We've spent a lot of time together this weekend. It <laughs> felt much longer than a weekend, didn't it? It was... Uh... <laughs> To be yeah. fair, you boys started early on Thursday night, you know. Yes. Yeah. yeah, long weekend, unbelievable yeah. amount of sport on. It's uh crazy. Yeah, it's a great time of year we're entering into. It's a bit warm, it's been shorts weather, and uh yeah, just right across the board. We had uh everything from uh golf, the NFL seasons, which we'll discuss yeah. shortly, uh footy finals and uh yeah, day out at the races, which uh ended up being a quite a long shift. <laughs> It was amazing. And uh, obviously, top rope, he came down for it. He made it down. It was amazing. So, you made the most of your Melbourne weekend, didn't you, top rope? I came bouncing down. I went home in a box. It was, uh, <laughs> it was absolutely, I'm not seasoned enough to be drinking, uh, drinking and uh, having fun with you guys. But it's, uh, uh, it was a hell of a lot of fun. Great to catch up. The uh, camaraderie at Little Birdie, uh, 100%. Uh, it, uh, uh, it was a, a hell of a weekend. But, uh, very, very tough getting up at uh, 3 a.m. for the NFL this morning, that's for sure. But you're glad you did get up because I hear you've absolutely tipped an absolute blinder for the first week of the NFL. Yeah, went 4-0 and for the package, uh, for the subscribes. So we're off to a, off to a good start and uh, hopefully it uh, finishes up a little better than I did over the weekend. So uh, <laughs> we've got a few more weeks to go. No, it was a good start. Some good angles in week one if you know what you're doing. So um went well and uh, I think subscribers to Jerry's package. He went 2-2. Two and two, So... Um, yeah, good start for the for the team. Oh yeah, good start for the punters. All right, that's what we want to give them. And um, give me a little golf recap. BMW over the weekend. Uh, BMW over the weekend. Held the leaderboard. Uh, Shane Lowry got the job done. Didn't uh, haven't watched the highlights of the, the final round yet, but uh, shortened to fifty four holes uh, mm-hmm. um, because the Queen died. So I'll tell you what, uh, a, a little ironic with an Irishman winning after 54 holes as well. A staunch Republican as well, like Shane Larry. So, <laughs> um, yeah, very, very interesting. It was, it was, a, shame, it was a shame it was short, actually, because it was, uh, it really attracted an almighty few with plenty of live golfers. Um, you know, you had Rory McElroy, John Rahm there, kind of around the PGA uh, ship as well, and the best of the, the DP world tour. So, uh, great tournament. Well done to, to Shane Larry. It's, I think it might be his first win since his Open Championship. He might have had another one in there somewhere, but uh, he certainly hasn't won a lot since he won the 2019 Open. Thanks, Top Rope. That's amazing. And um little recap for the Italian Grand Prix, Monza, over the weekend. Um, Max Verstappen won. Uh, so that is it. He literally can't lose now. I mean, I think I said that last week. Um, Charles Leclerc ran second for Ferrari. George Russell, my man from the UK, he was third. Um, but it was a pretty uneventful race uh, pretty much. So Verstappen started in second. He won. Um, and that's it. They've got six races left, so highly unlikely, unless he literally doesn't finish in all six races, he's got that championship uh, tied up. And, um, yeah, look, I think, you know, Red Bull, they just stamped their authority this season. So, um, you know, um, everyone else has got to have a little hard look at themselves. Ferrari had no one else to blame other than just performance, really, like not driver performance but car performance. It just hasn't been solid all year, so that's why they're sitting where they are. Um, but, yeah, look forward to what George Russell's going to do. I really think he's got a huge um, career in front of him, especially if Lewis decides not to drive on, you know, become the number one driver and hopefully they get behind him. That's my take on it. The home home crowd, I hear they were. Uh, <laughs> they booed Verstappen. Booing. Do you blame them? Very sportsman like <laughs> the Italians, top rope, <laughs> go, going to a world-class event and just booing. <laughs> I mean, you know, you've got Scuderia Ferrari that's gone second, all right? Like they don't particularly like Verstappen, okay? He's not. It's not the most likable character for F1, unfortunately. And, look, you, you know, you drive F1, it's a lot of money. You're driving very fast cars. You're allowed to have ego, but he's got ego. So, you know, the Italians are going to keep you in check. I mean, they did boo Hamilton too once, so, you know. I respect booing. Well, I respect widespread booing. Uh, maybe that's just the Italian coming out of me there, MG, but uh, I'm all for picking a side and going hell for leather, uh, Abbott. So, well done, sir. I'm not really uh, all that well-versed with uh, with F1. I think it's car racing, but... Uh, <laughs> um, so I don't know much about, but uh, I'm all for the, the, the Italians cheering out the non-Italian. 
Sorry, booing them out of time. Exactly. Exactly. They know where it's at. And, um, give me a little recap of the US Open. MJ, that's all yours. That's you. Yeah, all we, you. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, the tennis is finally finished. It's a tough week to uh, squeeze in the tennis. But, uh, yeah, we've got uh, the women's firstly on the on the Saturday night, uh, number one player in the world, Swiatek. She uh, got the job done in straight sets, mm-hmm. although it was a tight uh, second set tie break uh, against Jabir, who is number four in the world. So, Tight contest with, uh, yeah, favourites running well. So that was her third Grand Slam. Mm-hmm. So very good effort by her. And then the uh, Spaniard, who is now, I believe, the new world number mm-hmm. one, um, Alcaraz, or as OB likes to call him, Alcatraz. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so he started, I think, number four in the world. Yeah. Uh, he has just completed his uh, victory, his first Grand Slam and uh, first time winner of uh, for, for a Grand Slam, sorry. Won in four sets and he beat... Uh, Rude, uh, yeah, so he's number seven in the world. So, yeah, there wasn't too many outsiders going on there. And, um, yeah, big wins, I guess, for the US Open. But, yeah, couldn't quite cl- uh, squeeze that into the uh, the schedule this morning <laughs> with so much NFL going on. It's, uh, it's really dominated the TV screens early this morning. Oh, well, we've got to get behind our packages, don't we? Okay, we might um, get straight into it and hit the AFL for the second week of the finals. Let's have a recap. Okay, Brisbane, they beat Melbourne. Not going to say, but I've been potting them for eight weeks. 92 to 79. <laughs> Colling, we got the job done against Frio, 79 to 59. What a week it was, MG. Yes, it was, uh, yeah, it was a very good weekend, actually, in the AFL. Um, reading the finals uh, in good order at the moment. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, haven't uh, haven't missed a game, really, in the, in the six games that have gone through. So, yeah, it was uh, unbelievable. I know Danaher did come out for uh, yeah. his uh, congratulations. Him had a ba- his wife had a baby. He'll be back for uh, this week's uh match and um yeah saw the line 17 18 finish all the way up to 25 i think some might have even touched 26 so staggering how big the line got and uh yeah it was pretty easy ride on the plus and uh any the brave soldiers that took i think it was 475 head to head so Mm. um, they got out to a massive price for a team uh as we kind of stated in our previews, and anyone who buys the packages and stuff like that was, you know, stated that melbourne may have been out of petrol tickets uh going to the game and uh yeah, they got off to a big lead again, Melbourne. But yeah, Brisbane just show how how full of running they are. Yeah. And uh, you know, I know it, they have a hoodoo at the MCG, and they have had struggled to win there. But I just think the ground sets up with them, uh, the space of the ground. Um, Melbourne being defense orientated, the same with Geelong going into next week, which we'll talk about uh, a bit later. But yeah, for this match, I thought Brisbane just ran it out well, um, and yeah, Melbourne just. Just tired a bit. You know, I know you potted them two months ago and you've kept going down with the ship, but uh, they had their chances. They were obviously oh. up, up a good margin as well. But, yeah, exciting game again. The finals have been unbelievable in the AFL. Yep. Um, so that was just, no a, different- just a note from the cheap sheets there, MG. Um, uh, teams uh, post-crying 0-2, and two, players who cry <laughs> 0-2 in, in games. So uh, it turned out uh, shedding tears in a game is not an ideal way to uh, succeed in the AFL. And then, um, and then you know, to cap it off, like the, I don't know the Melbourne player because obviously they're not my team and I, I don't really Petty. like watching them. No, it wasn't him, oh. the one that um, when he kicked it, when they said that it was out on the bounds on the full, at, like deliberate, and then he carried on like an absolute pork chop like for a minute and then they gave – 50 away like I'll a penalty. Leave what an end. idiot like you've got to literally have a good hard look at yourself you've got crying and then you've got carrying on like a two-year-old in front of the whole of australia watching this game your home crowd honestly you honestly brief, i'll be honest i'm not sure about the whole of australia then the game was shot by then anyway so <laughs> they were home so it didn't make a difference but yeah it's uh it's good brisbane are going on and in the other game uh you yeah, know really tipped up collingwood i thought yeah. um they were an outstanding bet on the yep. weekend. Um, I just think the bookies uh, started way too cheap on them and, um, you know, they they really should have won by more, Collingwood. They missed a lot of opportunities uh, after starting fast. I think they kicked eight or nine points in a row at one stage. So, yeah, the uh, the margin definitely flooded Frio. The game was very lopsided and, uh, yes, yeah, good win and uh, a good watch for those who uh, jumped on Collingwood. Uh, unfortunately, I think they're going to be up against it going to Sydney. They're going to have to raise yeah. their game. I just think there's – a bit of a level that mm. uh, the other teams are playing at. Uh, and I just think Collingwood might. They're going to have to find something to to get over the top of Sydney at the SCG. But, yeah, what a fantastic year, uh, finishing the, in, the, in the top four. So, oh. um, yeah, we'll get on to those games. But, yeah, it was an um, exciting weekend in front of big crowds. They actually got 90,000 to the MCG to watch a Frio game. So that's oh, that's ex- huge. That's extraordinary. So, yeah. There were a lot of Frio supporters, though, in the city. Like on over the weekend there was a lot. And I think, you know, like they do travel. So. 
that's a good thing about the teams from the West. Their supporter base will travel. Unlike the teams from the North. All right, let's have a look at the bookie wrap. All right, so one of two faves, one of two covers, one of two over totals, and one of two for the home teams. Look at that, 50% all round. Okay, and for the season, it's 71% of faves, 51% of covers, 55% of over totals, and 60% for the home teams. Yeah, so basically as a marker, 70%, um, you know, higher or lower is generally to see how you'd say the punters of the bookies go. So it's pretty much been on the mark again this year. As you can see, the covers 51%, so it's been very tight. Very even, and the scoring's probably been a bit up this year at 55%, uh, with the home teams probably being down at 60%. Mm -hmm. So home teams have been uh, less advantage. But, yeah, the stats have been pretty even this year. So. Thanks, MG. Okay, let's have a look at the AFL Stings for week two. Okay, so we had four and a half units bet. We did win one and a half units. And for the season, 268 and a half units, and you're up 33.83 units, and that is a return of 12.59%. You're killing it. Yeah, season's going okay. Yeah, I probably should have probably should have bet Brisbane out late. Mm. Uh, that was probably the mistake for the uh, for the Sting followers. But uh, yeah, on socials and stuff like that. And if you watch the podcast and uh, get the report, then over a tip up. But yeah, Collingwood were uh, a good win. Unfortunately, I thought the total got a bit cheap late. Um, it, it started to drop with with the weather around. Yeah. But then reading the weather, I thought it was going to clear. And unfortunately, yeah, Collingwood went through a really bad patch there where they couldn't kick a goal. And that uh, probably just cost a total in the end for uh, 10, 10 points short, but yeah, profit for the week. So we'll move on. We've only got three games left yet now, so we'll hope we can oh. finish up the season. Oh, my God, three three games left and obviously Brownlow night too. So uh, get amongst it, punters. All right, let's have a quick look at um, this weekend's game. So we've got Friday night, Geelong take on Brisbane, $1.29, Brisbane 360. The line is 22 and a half. Friday night, seven fifty. This might be a good one, MG. Yeah, well, looking forward to both both games. Um, we've got a chance, I guess. Brisbane uh, tipped them up mm -hmm. strongly pre-season. I thought they they had the uh, the draw and the cattle to get go deep in the year, and then they've really uh, fallen away on the back end of the year. But yeah, we've um, locked in for those tickets, so we've got a chance to um, get them to a grand final. Uh, it's going to be a tough job coming again, travelling, coming down to the MCG. Geelong have had a week off, uh, but you know, I I just think Brisbane. Are peaking now at the right time, and we've seen this done before. Um, you know, Bulldogs are yep. well highlighted, and, you know, so you can catch fire at the right time. And I just think, you know, they'll get Danaher back into that side. That Barry, we're not sure he's obviously been suspended whether he'll get out of the charge or not. But yeah, I just, I'm just not. I, Geelong have been the best side all year. Mm -hmm. I just think this is a, a again the line is too big at 22. Yep. Wouldn't be surprised me if they all come for Geelong again. Uh, but yeah, I think Brisbane are up to this. Uh, up to it with every chance, and at the MCG, I think the ground will suit them. It'll be another uh, another sellout, and uh, if the weather's fine, um, they'll give Geelong all they can handle. I think first look. All right, okay, a little bit of Brisbane flair there. All right, and on Saturday at what have we got? Four forty-five PM at the SCG. Sydney take on Collingwood. Sydney a dollar thirty-eight. Collingwood three oh five, and the line is eighteen and a half. Yeah, well, the Swans we've been uh, we've jumped the mm -hmm. board probably about the last eight nine weeks now, so. Um, we've got uh, our chips in with a good price. I think just betting purely on this game, I think it's about right. I come out with Sydney at uh, tw minus 20 and a half in my ratings early. And so 18, I think, is about right. Colin would have been obviously unbelievable the back end of this year, especially, and yeah. played in a lot of close games. So being at the SCG, I think this would be tight, contested football. I just think Sydney's a better side uh, right now. And uh, I think they'll get the job done. But yeah, I think the betting's about right. So. Wouldn't tip either way at this stage. Okay. All right. Well, you've got to tune in on uh, Thursday to hear what they're going to do uh, to go through it a little bit further with OB. But if we have a look at the premiership market, Geelong is 210. The Swans are 290. Now, if you took his tip at $12, you'd be pretty happy with that. Uh, Collingwood is $6 and Brisbane Lions, 850. Yeah, it is what it is. It's a straight out all up now at the, yep. at the betting. So uh, the premiership, you know, just equals what, what they're going to be in the run home. So there's not too much, uh, not too much <coughs> value there. You can play yep. the matches at the same price. Yep. All right. Okay. And uh, if we have a quick look to next Monday night's Brownlow, I don't think there's been much change here, has there? Lockie Neal, 325. Clayton Oliver, 340. Patrick Cripps, 5. Brayshaw, 750. And Petrarca, 9. Took Miller, $9. No, we're just seeing, I mean, we're, you know, the bookies are now really starting to tighten up Oliver a bit. Uh, yep. You know, he was as big as $4 a couple of weeks ago when the season finished, and I, I thought they should have been a lot closer together. I just, I just think it's a two-horse race for me. Yep. I, I just think the next four players are – are between that three to five votes off them, uh, and then you can have the rest shouldn't even be on the board. There's no more chances beyond mm. the, 
the top six. But yeah, I think uh, I think Neil and Oliver will go pretty much equal favourites come uh, come the Brownlow night. Okay, well, we've got one way to go, so you need to get on top of his Brownlow package, $99. Next Monday night, the 19th, we've got the Brownlow night, uh, the big night for the AFL. Okay, so get amongst that, $99. And punters, if you do want the AFL stings, he literally has got two live shots going for the grand final. He tipped Brisbane at the start of the year and he's tipped out Sydney at $12. So get amongst the stings, $22 a week, and that's in the Little Birdie TV shop. Little Birdie TV, AFL stings, $22 a week. Quick break, we're going to be back with Top Rope and NRL. Welcome back to First Look, proudly brought to you by topsport.com.au. Family owned and operated for over 35 years. Bet with the bookie you can trust, bet with Top Sport. Okay, let's have a quick look at the NRL round one finals week. All right, Penrith, they beat Parramatta 27 to 8. Canberra beat Melbourne Storm 28 to 20. North Queensland in a thriller over Cronulla 32 to 30. And Souths yesterday, sadly, they beat the Roosters 30 to 14. <laughs> Top rope. Uh, wild, wild weekend of songs for you. Doesn't get much better than this. Um, yeah, the, the Panthers uh, knocked off Arch Rivals, uh, the Eels 27-8 on, uh, on Friday night, but only led 7-6 at halftime, and the Eels actually led 8-7 early in the second half. But uh, Wonga Blake put, him down in from, put himself down in for me with uh, absolute shock. I dropped four balls that proved pretty costly. Uh, Penrith now advanced to a week off the Eels. Their finals hoodoo continues, so they've got a very, very difficult uh Okay, next week, which we'll get to, but uh, yeah, look, the, the the weight of history is is you know, playing pretty heavily on them. I'd, I'd suggest, uh, you yeah, know, the, the Storm did look vulnerable when they hosted the the Raiders, and the Raiders remarkably now won five straight at Amy Park. I don't think any other team would uh, have a record close to that. Uh, that good down in Melbourne. So, um, Ricky Stewart, great match with uh, Craig Bellamy, but it was a uh, yeah, you know, fairly dominant win. You know, Melbourne. Uh, um, or behind at half time and never really, you know, they got they, they did get the lead back, uh, kind of midway through the second half, but uh, they just seemed to lack the, the kind of aggression and the discipline that, um, that the Raiders had. So, you know, Hudson Young's kind of emerging as, as one of the, the, the best back edge back rows in the game he scored against, so he's got a remarkable try scoring record this year. Uh, an all-time classic on on Saturday night, the Sharks and the Cowboys. It was a heavyweight ding dong battle. Uh, the the Sharks Sharks led by eight, with, you know, but you know, fought, I think it was seven eight minutes to go. They led by six with a minute to go. So, uh, and then Valentine Holmes kicked a forty-five meter two-point field goal uh, in the ninety-third minute. One of the longest matches in uh, Premiership history. So, uh, remarkable win. Uh, great game, and now the Cowboys get the benefit of a preliminary final, and it's a remarkable turnaround for a team uh, that finished well and truly uh, in the bottom four last year. So, uh, yeah, huge turnaround. Top eight done a great job. He's an absolute morale for uh, coach of the year. Unfortunately, no betting on that. But uh, if you can find someone out wide to offer it here, good luck to you. Top eight wins, dollar one is value, uh, and the Chooks bunnies. Oh, I've been watching rugby league. For 35 odd years, I don't ever remember a game like this. Seven sin bins. It's a record for the NRL era, maybe <laughs> a record of all time. Uh, yeah, the referee was complete control. Actually, kind no surprises there. Uh, uh, but yeah, the Roosters were given absolutely no chance when Tom Burgess took out uh, took out James Tedesco. He was off. Uh, Joseph Swahili, who who you know, talk around might push James Tedesco out of, of, of the club and play fullback, he shifted to fullback and look, he's a, no doubt a promising talent. Did not pass the ball once, butchered a few tries. Uh, I think he needed a few more years on the wing before pushing out someone of the class of Tedesco. Uh, the Roosters were getting very frustrated. The key point came when I think the Bunnies were down to 11 players uh, once those Roosters won the attack. And Angus Crichton uh, spilled the ball. He had a great game, Crichton, but uh, spilled the ball in the attacking position. The Rabbitohs went down the other end, scored a try. And, you know, what was remarkable, the eight uh, eight tries that were scored yesterday, five were scored with the team with uh, fewer players on the field. So, you know, a hell of a hell of a game. Uh, absolutely packed, uh, packed to the Yield Sydney Football Stadium. Uh, yeah, beautiful day. Some, some yeah. Drama like you've really seen. That would rank up on the great atmospheres in rugby league history. So, uh, yeah, awesome weekend of footy. And uh, 
yeah, we've got uh, three weeks left to decide the winner. We sure do. Okay, let's have a look at the boogie wrap. All right, so one of four faves, one of four covers, three or four over totals, and one of four home teams. And for the season, that's seventy percent of faves, fifty one percent of covers, fifty three percent over totals, and fifty eight percent for the home teams. Wow. Yeah, it's all kind of, like I just said before. Seventy percent is where you want to be. We're looking out for the favourites. It's been probably yep, yeah, well, just bang on for, for the NRL. I was around fifty three percent, so not making any huge profit there. So. Um, yeah, all, all about as expected, please. Okay, thanks, Top Rope. Now, let's have a look at the GGOA. Okay, so for the first week, two of four, we had 12 units bet, did result in a slight minus of 2.25 units. But for this season, 348 and a half units, that has resulted in plus 37.91 units, and that is a return of 10.87%. You've killed it. Yeah, I have a good year, and we were desperately unlucky not to, uh, not to get the, uh, the cash with the, uh, the Raiders uh, storm under there. It was. It was looking like it was going to settle on uh, on forty two points for a long, 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 long time there, and uh, a late Raiders try uh, put that one to to bed. But it was it was looking very good. Uh, Rooster South that went over uh, yesterday, but uh, hopefully Punners got the got on early because it jumped forty four and a half. So those who bet at the jump uh, didn't win that one. The Raiders plus eight and a half was never a concern. The Eagles plus eight and a half was looking very good at half time, but. Uh, Quickly went by the wayside. Yeah, yeah. Penrith were very dominant in that game, and I think that surprised a lot of people, really, like just how dominant they were. Um, all right, let's have a quick look forward to week two for the NRL finals. We've got uh, Parramatta taking on Canberra Friday night, 7.50 p.m. Para, $1.53. Canberra, two fifty, and the line's five and a half. Yeah, I'll look, first look at this, and I haven't put the, the work into it. I'm to kind of too deep on this one. We'll talk about that more on Thursday. But uh, um, the Raiders to Mabel. Tremendous value this week. They're, they're, they're the team coming with the most momentum. Uh, yeah, they've, they've traditionally played the Eels well. And, and I think where where the Eels are vulnerable, you know, some of their edge defence, you know, some wingers with Paul Hanley, where the Raiders are at their best. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll let the Raiders first off. Okay, thanks, Top Rope. Raiders there at 250. That's not a bad bet on a Monday. All right, Saturday, we've got the 8 p.m. game, Cronulla take on South Sydney. Cronulla a dollar ninety five, Sousa a dollar eighty five, no line at the moment. Wow, this is going to be a tough one. Don't know how you don't come into the Sharks earlier on here, just you know, based on the the, the brutality of yesterday's yesterday's game. And, mm. You know, I'm unclear kind of you know who, who the match review panel is going to uh, uh, decide this one. Whether there'll be any drama, probably probably not going to be any long term issues to any, any notable players, but. Um, you would have to think that would take some kind of toll on, on the Rabbitohs. It was a very, very physical game. So um, first thoughts are the Sharks. You haven't delved too deep. The Sharks won a thriller earlier in the year against, uh, against the Bunnies, 21-20, I think it was. So, uh, you know, I, I can see you know, a real hard fought, not a hard fought game there, but, you know, the Sharks probably, uh, you know, who I'm thinking of them. All right. I'm up with you there. Up, up. Let's go. All right. Yeah, yeah, I love them. Okay, now if we have a quick look at the premiership market, Penrith $1.82, North Queensland five fifty, Parramatta eight twenty five, South Sydney nine fifty, Cronulla ten, and the Raiders at twenty one. Could you take the Raiders at twenty one? Uh yeah, you could take the Raiders at twenty one. If I was having if I was having a couple of bets this week, it'd be the Raiders at twenty one, because I think they will beat uh beat Parramatta for the stick there. And, and I think there's probably a bit of value with the Cowboys, uh, truth be told, because they've got a home file in Townsville. Not they're gonna be they come to Sydney, they're going to be decent outsiders against Penrith in the grand final. So, you know, we get to this time of year, there's never a huge amount of value. But, uh, you know, they've got a home final. They've got a, they're absolutely going to be favourite against, um, against whoever they play, uh, the Paramount or the Raiders up there. So, uh, yeah, I can absolutely see uh, 550 being a bit there for the Cowboys. Okay, thanks, Top Rope. 550 there. Now, punters, if you do like the GGOA and you want his results, you need $22 a week. Little Betty Live TV Shop, $22 a week for the GGOA. You need to get it. MG, over to you. For the charity competition, which yes, is... Yes, you uh, can gloat. You <laughs> can gloat all your <laughs> no, line. No, I'm not going. <laughs> um, all right, so, yeah, we went... Uh, what do we go? Oh, that's right. Yeah, Colin... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just looking at the screen there, guys. Uh, Collingwood uh, got the chocolates for me there, minus 11 and a half. Uh, punters would have got a little bit better than that. Uh, they were a bit patient. Uh, as we said, top rope missed out with the Eels, plus eight and a half. Penrith were too good there, and your Sharkies got mm. beached late. You had that one covered oh too, my God. Nicky, with a minute to go. So, um, 
The doubt, yeah, so what have I got? Five shot lead. So this is done with two weeks to go, but uh, hopefully uh, I'm sitting at 18 and nine at the moment. So I've got two weeks to go to maybe put another 200 in the kick for the charity Love Me, Love You. So that uh, hopefully they'll have either 1,800, 1,900 or two grand coming their way, which will um, hopefully get um, the owner of that charity to come in and, uh, and collect the prize. So what have we got for week 28 predictions? As I said, we've got two weeks to go for this competition. So top rope, what have you got for Wayside Chapel uh, for this week? I think we're going to jump into the Raiders, Raiders Plus early doors. So um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll go to Canberra. Canberra for top rope's early tip. And Nicky, you've been tipping for Sids and Kids all year. You've done a tremendous job. What are you tipping for this week? AFL or NRL? You haven't got no I'm choices. St- no, I'm sticking with the NRL because you know it's my game. Um, but uh, yeah, look, look, I'm going to go South Sydney minus one and a half. I think if they bring what they did, look, I understand what Top Rope's saying about the um, potential battering that they took, but they are a dirty, dirty club. So don't worry, they'll <laughs> they'll bring it back against Cronulla. And look, I'm hoping South minus one and a half. But um, if Cronulla win, obviously we're on that for the premiership. So I'm happy with that. All right, going against your team. Grinnell, that's an interesting strategy. Um, okay, I'm going to finish out with uh, AFL. I'm going Brisbane plus 22 and a half. I think early yeah. doors at least. <laughs> they look uh, a big price to me against Geelong on the Friday night. Okay, thanks, boys. All right, that is a wrap for this edition of First Look. Remember, you can follow us on socials. We are Little Betty TV, Twitter and Insta. Also, you can follow us on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Download our podcast everywhere you get your good podcasts from. Remember, all the footy betting action is at topsport.com.au. Also, all your NFL betting there as well. Um, OB is going to be here with the boys on Thursday for Friday line, so make sure you tune in then. Have a great week. Bye.